Oh, hello. This is Sustainability Modeling Spring of 2013, lecture number five. Um, it's not me, it's you, or models of social interaction. Let me tell you uh, the lecture outline for today. We're going to be looking at uh, interaction between populations. And, and so far, we in the class, we've been discussing primarily you know, single stock models. Um, this lecture, we're going to introduce a number of multiple stock models and see how these different populations interact. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of math uh, for that purpose, uh, and we'll be introducing that as well. And um, we're going to be looking at a, a first type of interaction, which uh, is referred to as the predator-prey models. We're going to be do looking at a, a simple example in predator-prey. Um, we're going to be doing an advanced version of a predator-prey model. Uh, we're going to be looking at the interaction between population and catastrophes, and how uh, you know how a catastrophe affects a, a you know population at a given point in time, and see how that uh, changes the dynamics of the system. Um, and then we're going to talk about another type of interaction between populations, which is epidemics, and how epidemics um, you know uh, move over time. Um, I think the um, I think the first thing I'll say between of interaction between populations is that uh, in terms of when we speak about populations, uh, the, ver the you know, plural, the, those could be different species, um, could be different cohorts or simply subgroups. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to be doing this in, in, in the most general of senses. Um, and the key characteristics of these interactions is that the dynamics of each population are affected by the dynamics of others. So it's a, it's a mutual interaction. And, and, and uh, today we'll focus on on you know on, on several types we're going to be looking at predator prey interactions uh, which are more competition between species when looking at catastrophes and epidemics so so let's talk about the predator prey interactions uh, the you know a simple uh, population interaction of the predator prey type was derived independently by by two scientists uh, um, Alfred Locke in the United States um, and uh, Vito Volterra in Italy at about the same time. And the, the model that both of these uh, came up with that describes the dynamics of competition between two species. So these are two species competing against, against each other. And this essentially results in one species uh, being able to grow at the, at the expense of the other. Okay, And uh, the species that is able to grow at the expense of the other we call the predator. And the one that gets grown upon, um, or, go, or at, at the expense of, it's uh, what we're going to be calling, calling the prey. Uh, this model um, is mathematically described by a very classical set of equations that are referred to as the lotka volterra equations. And I want to go uh, briefly through them. Um, the general idea is that we have uh, two populations, X and Y. Um, X is the predator population, and Y is the prey. Um, and the dynamics, uh, so uh, you have essentially two dynamic equations, one for the predator, one for the prey. And each of these dynamic equations has a plus and a minus term. The plus term, as we've seen before, is denoted to, um, to uh, describe population growth, and the negative term is population decay. Um, so in the case of uh, the predator, um, the growth of the predator, it's uh, driven by the availability of the predator and the prey, meaning basically that uh, the more population or predator there is, the faster they grow, but also uh, the predator needs the availability of the prey to grow. So therefore you have a, um, you know, these, um, what we refer to these second order dynamics um, and uh, driven by this rate coefficient a, and we're going to be seeing a model of this, um, you know, later in this lecture, and we'll see what you know what the numbers are, and then um, and then the predator has a a, a natural uh, you know a rate of death um, represented by b, so uh, that, and that causes uh, the predator to to decay. So that's those are the dynamics, the conceptual dynamics of the predator population. The prey, on the other hand, is also able to grow, and it grows naturally, um, and uh, driven by, driven by a, a, a coefficient c. And then the death of, or the decay of the prey, 
it's, uh, it's not only due to natural causes, but it's also due to the availability of the predator, x. That's why in the prey equation, the decay is driven by these second order dynamics. Um, so th those are essentially, that's essentially the, um, the essence of the lotka volterra equations, okay? Now, I like to rewrite these equations just to, uh, to make, un you know, have a better understanding of how these uh, dynamics work. And essentially, if you just factor out a few terms, then you can recognize very easily um, that, um, you know, the first term on the right-hand side of the predator equation um, denotes that the growth of the predator is driven by the availability of prey. So the growth A times Y of the predator is, is proportional to the availability of prey Y, okay? Similarly, um, in the prey, the death uh, of the prey is driven by the population of predators, okay? So the more predators there are available, the faster the, the prey will decay, okay? So this leads to, to some interesting dynamics. Now, one useful aspect of looking at, at multiple species dynamics like this uh, is that you can look at the concept of the equilibrium population sizes. And these are essentially, um, you know, if, if these populations were to stabilize, what would be their values? And that they're found simply by setting uh, the uh, equations to zero. So basically they don't change over time. And uh, you, you can just set the, uh, the right-hand sides of both equations to zero. Um, and this allows you to calculate two values of equilibrium populations. One for the prey, y sub e, which is found as the, as the rate b divided by the rate a, um, and um, another equilibrium population for the predator, x sub e, which is found by the ratio of constant c divided by constant d. Okay, it's, that's some, some very simple, uh, just setting to zero the right-hand sides of the equations and uh, solving for um, the population sizes. Um, and do a simple calculation, and let's imagine that we have a, uh, we're going to be doing, working on, on this model um, later on in this class. Let's imagine that we have um, a popular, you know, two species, foxes and rabbits, um, and um, given with these parameters, um, parameters A, B, C, and D, and notice the units of, of, the, uh, of the parameters. Um, A and D, which are the growth of the predator and the death of the prey, um, are, uh, are second order units, so they have, um, you know, they depend on the other predator. And then uh, B and C, which are the, uh, the death rate of the predator and the growth rate of the prey are independent. Um, and they just have units of time. And let's imagine that we have a, an initial population of 100 predators, foxes, or and 1,000 rabbits of prey. So let's just do, um, do that, and um, you can actually uh, do a calculation, and um, if you do that, uh, you can come up with uh, with equilibrium populations um, of, uh, in this case, uh, 667 rabbits and 150 foxes. So these are, if if the system were to stabilize, uh, these would be the uh, you know the values uh, of coexistence of um, foxes and rabbits given these dynamics. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to I'm going to show you some Benson results. We're going to come back and run this the Benson model specifically for this case. But I I, I didn't want to show you how the outcome looks like. And and uh, you know it, it's interesting that when you plot um, uh, the predator and prey populations uh, uh, in in a plot like this, um, you're going to see that the they actually both um, have oscillations. Um, and um, and that's interesting. So they don't the populations don't really stabilize. And this is this is interesting because in the population models that we discussed last uh, last lecture, uh, you know, where we had the carrying capacity and and, and these concepts, uh, essentially in, in, in all scenarios, uh, what you what you saw we saw is that the population tended to stabilize after a while. Here um, we're looking at um, you know over a thousand years and populations. Um, um, are oscillating all the time, uh, so they they, um, they go up and down. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that they tend to oscillate around the equilibrium value. So if you if you look at the value for the rabbits, which was 667, 
It's somewhere in the middle range of the oscillations. And similarly for the foxes, the 150 population, it's in the range for uh, for the population of, of foxes. So that's a uh, that's interesting, and that happens because of this uh, interacting dynamics of the two. Is that you're you're actually not able populations don't really stabilize, but they actually oscillate um, uh, over time. So um, if we can summarize some, this with a few remarks, first there is an oscillatory behavior in both populations, and these oscillations are around the these equilibrium population values. So there's really no static equilibrium. Um, uh, rather, it's a dynamic equilibrium, meaning that you know, you get the oscillations, and these oscillations are are you know constant over time. You know they it, the populations uh, go up and down, and they do so over time. And uh, it's interesting because this well-established uh, classical result matches observations in many natural scenarios, and particularly when you have pure competition and. You know, if you look at the at the large ecological reserves, um, 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 you know, in in, in South Africa um, or the southern Africa, part of Africa in particular, you see that the populations of several species tend to go through these oscillations. They grow and they die, and then they grow again and die again over over multiple years um, when they're not intervened. So, and and, and remember that, that these uh, these very simple Latka Volterra equations do not consider any type of um, intervention, you know, no, um, uh, no uh, sequestering one species for, uh, for food or for uh, agriculture or anything like that. So these are really pure, it's pure competition between two species, okay? Uh, so we're going to be looking at, at this model in a lot more detail, and we're going to be looking at two versions of predator-prey models, um, you know, one uh, which is the simple case, and then we're going to be I'm making it a little bit more complex, uh, so that that's going to be you know part. Of, I'll take you through part of uh, today's lecture. The next um, you know the next type of interaction that we're going to be see later on in, in, in the modeling is um, is epidemics, uh, and uh, epidemics are are interesting, uh, and and some of the dynamics are similar to this predator prey. Um, the model that's that's uh, used uh, there are, there are a number of them, but there's a classical uh, SIR model SIR for susceptible, infected, recovered uh, model. And um, I want to basically flash a little bit the math here and uh, just uh, walk you a little bit through the equations because we're going to be coming back to this specific example in you know in you know with the Benson model. Um, but essentially, you have a uh, you know three uh, state uh, variables or three control variables, which are um, uh, the susceptible population, uh, the infected population, and the re recovered or recuperated population. Each of them um, has a um, again a a positive negative dynamic. So the positive means the population is is growing, uh, and so in in the case of the susceptibles, uh, susceptibles grow, um, um, you know, as a as a as a fraction of the recovered. Which means that you know some you know some population um, that recovers from uh, the illness can 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 become susceptible again. Okay, um, and some models have this term, some don't. Uh, and I wanted to show you this one. Uh, and um, the susceptibles decrease uh, because of a um, of the possibility of getting infected. Okay, so once they become infected, they're no longer susceptible. They become infected population. The infected uh, individuals uh, uh, grow um, at the expense at, of the susceptibles, and um, and but they can recover. Okay, so there there is a, an ability to be recovered, um, and uh, that's a negative term in the infected equation. Okay, um, once a um, an infected becomes recovered, it uh, it's um, it's part of the recovery pool, the recovered pool. And the recovered pool grows um, um, according uh, to um, um, to the dynamics of the um, of the infected. Okay, uh, so um, you know the recovered grow at the expense of the infected. So that's uh, sort of the dynamic that's captured there. And uh, so and, and similarly to the predator prey model, you have some alpha, beta, and gamma coefficients that are used to um, describe. The rate of exposition uh, to the epidemic, uh, the rate of infection, you know, the actually catching the disease, uh, and the rate of recovery, and getting out of the disease. Okay. Um, well, uh, I, we're going to move on, and uh, 
uh, to uh, the, the next part of, of the lecture, which is to look at the Benson models. And we're going to be looking at four uh, Benson models that are here, uh, the predator prey. Um, and uh, each of these models has its link, uh, so you can actually um, you know, look at the, at, the, at, the, at the video. So I'm going to be stitching all of this together uh, in, in a single uh, video lecture, but you can actually look at the individual uh, videos for each of these cases um, in YouTube. And also, of course, um, if you want to view them offline, uh, the videos will also be on Dropbox. Uh, so I'll be looking at the predator prey, simple, the advanced, the catastrophe, which I haven't really talked about uh, because the, uh, the, the math, it's, uh, it's, uh, as you will see, it's a little bit of a combination of the other two and the epidemics, which uh, we just explained. So uh, that's going to take us through uh, the next, um, uh, uh, to, to the next uh, part of the lecture. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll lead with that.